we got involved with CivTech because we had a problem that we couldn't solve alone. So in Edinburgh we have 170,000 tenement flats um, and we have a real problem with owners being able to engage with each other to be able to um, work out how they can do their common repairs. There was a particular challenge around uh, growing more trees faster uh, as a result of climate change that meant that we needed to change uh, a pace quicker than we normally uh, would have had to. We were really looking for a solution to a challenge we were having around pre-employment checks. When we looked at the market, we looked at a lot of different options and none of them quite felt right for what we needed. Um, and the CivTech process was really just an opportunity to be able to set out what it was that, that we thought we needed and, and look to our uh, suppliers and the marketplace uh, in Scotland uh, for creative approaches. Yeah, we didn't want to wait for any regulative change or new legislation that would take up to 10 years for that to happen. So we wanted to do something now if we could and uh, CivTech offered that opportunity to us. Traditionally, procurement isn't the most exciting process, but CivTech have really brought this to, to life. Um, sometimes the worst thing you can get from a procurement is exactly what you've asked for. And I think that the CivTech process has been uh, powerful in being able to, to give us exactly what we need rather than what we thought we wanted at the beginning. And that's been fantastic for all those involved. One of the main benefits of going through CivTech rather than our kind of in-house normal style of procurement is that uh, they have the experience to deal with some of the unexpected problems that um, arise when trying to do things differently. The challenge that we have currently has no solution. So what the CivTech process will do will help us scope that out. So you don't always know where you're going to end up when you start with the CivTech process, but the really structured approach to development helps us really drive value for money um, because it means that we can get outcomes really, really quickly through the process. By being able to take an iterative, agile approach, we're able to be responsive to how the challenge develops and also keep costs down. We've learned a lot of great lessons from that about how to be more agile and flexible, and we've been able to bring all of those learnings into some of our other projects that we're doing as part of our broader programme. The benefit of having gone through this challenge is that it shows that there is the support and the confidence to be able to try things differently, and that's been really well received in our organisation, and we're going to try and work like this more often in future. The tech process is flexible enough to be able to to change the scope and um, the scope naturally will change as you go along this process um, and we realise that the number of stakeholders that could be involved in the solution and would benefit from it has meant that we've altered the scope slightly um, which has been which will benefit everybody. We just thought that this is really the spirit of CivTech. It's being able to, to bring suppliers together to collaborate, um, not necessarily to the benefit of the Scottish Government, but to the wider economy uh, and to the market more generally. And, and that's got to be a good result for everybody. I have a vested interest in seeing our public services deliver value for money and also seeing our digital economy thriving. I hope to see more public sector organisations using CivTech to do procurement in a different way. It's good for our digital businesses to get a foot in the door and to see more contracts and it's great for our public sector and citizens because hopefully doing business this way actually improves the outcomes that the public organisations see. Thanks for listening and if you're excited about CivTech and you want to get involved, then please do come and speak to us.